My name is Chris Gansky, and I am pastor of City Reformed Church in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. A biblical understanding of marriage must begin where Jesus began, which is with God's original creation. He says to his disciples, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. According to Jesus, marriage is not a cultural construct, but created by God. According to Jesus, marriage is a union between one man and one woman. According to Jesus, marriage is a lifelong covenant in which husband and wife become one flesh. And finally, according to Jesus, all marriages will be dissolved by death and replaced by a greater and more glorious marriage between his church as bride and himself as bridegroom. Biblical sexuality is historic because the church has had the same understanding about sexuality since the beginning. The gospel spread during the no boundaries sexuality of the Greco-Roman world. For that world, confining sex to a husband and wife marriage was ridiculous. And so Christianity began with this distinctive sexual ethic. Besides a few small sectarian groups like the Shakers, the church has always been on the same page about sexuality, that is until maybe 50 years ago. The Bible was clear until churches in the Western world started to adopt ideas of the sexual revolution. The worldwide historical church has always maintained that sex is reserved for a husband and wife in the covenant of marriage and that's why it's important to stand for biblical sexuality. One reason we stand for biblical sexuality is integrity in our proclamation of the gospel. The integrity of God's design is at stake. Ephesians 5 says that marriage between a man and a woman is a fundamental picture of the relationship between Christ and his church. So altering marriage compromises God's design for our living proclamation of the gospel. Compromising on biblical sexuality also misrepresents the transforming power of the gospel. Through faith in Christ, we have a new identity. 1 Corinthians 6 says Christians then are no longer defined by sexual immorality, practicing homosexuality, greed, and the like. Verse 11 insists, And such were some of you, but you were washed in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we stand for biblical sexuality for the integrity of our proclamation of the gospel. Biblical sexuality is worth fighting for because the church is one holy, Catholic, and apostolic. We are the called out ones, not conforming to the pattern of this world. We hold fast to the apostles' teaching, even when that teaching swims upstream against cultural currents. We stay true to the faith once for all delivered to the saints, honoring the witness of both the historic church and the global church. Biblical sexuality is worth fighting for because we are a bride, a bride who loves Jesus, a bride who when she hears the beloved say, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, hastens herself to do just that. Biblical sexuality is worth fighting for because God's glory is worth fighting for. Sexual sin is contrary to the gospel of the glory of the blessed God. Why does the Father save us and adopt us in Christ? For the praise of his glory. Why does the Holy Spirit live in us and make us holy? For the praise of his glory. So glorify God with your body. Glorify God with your sexuality. Glorify God with sound teaching. Don't Glorify sexual sin. Don't call evil good. Whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Biblical sexuality is worth fighting for because we love people. We want people to live the abundant life in Christ, a life filled with joy as we walk in step with His will and His Spirit. Like Moses in Hebrews 11, we want people to understand that faithfulness to Christ is worth more than anything the world has to offer. 
But if we want to love people in this way, we must clearly express God's truth about how He's created us to live in the world and how to faithfully live out our sexuality. It's not loving for us to be vague about these truths. It's not loving to promote a sexuality that's contrary to these truths. We love people by helping them live out their sexuality according to God's design. For the sake of the true gospel, the faithfulness of Christ's church, the glory of God, and the good of his people, we strive for the Christian Reformed Church to uphold the wonderful and beautiful, the historic, beautiful, biblical understanding of human sexuality in doctrine, discipleship, and discipline. Por el bien del verdadero evangelio, la fidelidad de la iglesia de Cristo, la gloria de Dios y el bien de su pueblo, nos esforzamos porque la iglesia cristiana reformada defienda la comprensión histórica, hermosa y bíblica de la sexualidad humana en la doctrina, el discipulado y la disciplina. My name is Kurt Walters. My name is Omar Sosia. My name is Evelyn Benelli. I'm Johnny Gracia. My name is Aaron Vriesman. My name is Harold Caicedo. My name is Aaron Solomon Mills. My name is Corey Naderwald. My name is uh, Mirta Villafain. And I'm willing to stand for biblical sexuality. 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 We are no longer in a time or a place where we can be ambivalent about sexuality. We can't hide from it. This is a time to stand firm in God's truth. But we must do more than just stand firm. We must fight for biblical sexuality because we love our God and because we love our neighbor.